jointly with the United States Air Force. Uh, once the main core stage has burned out, um, the uh, payload, the lunar uh, lander, will be uh, accelerated using the J2X, which is also being used on the Ares-1. So the next clip, uh, we'll see the Ares-1. Again, what these vehicles have in common is the, the first stage of the Ares-1 is the same rocket motor, the five-segment solid used uh, as a strap-ons on the Ares-5. The second stage of the Ares-1 is using the same J2X, uh, which is in development right now. And then on top of this vehicle, you'll have the Orion spacecraft, and you can see on the very top there the abort system. So if you were to have a problem with your launch vehicle, the crew could escape off the top of the abort system, which you see being jettisoned here um, once you separate uh, from the first stage. Uh, once you get to orbit, your service module uh, there will provide all the propulsion to move the Orion spacecraft around either to the space station or to join up with the uh, Ares 5 payload, the lunar lander. Uh, next. Uh, just just quick animation. Uh, early on, once we get the Ares uh, 1 flying and the Orion flying, uh, the very first place we'll go check out the system is taking it up to the International Space Station. And this is just a quick clip of uh, Orion approaching the International Space Station. So we can go to the next clip here. Uh, a real quick update. Uh, a lot has been happening, a lot of design work, a lot of development work, and uh, we're well along to acquiring all the parts we need to put the system together. Um, the Ares-1 first stage, uh, planned award of the formalized contract, is coming up here within, the, uh, within this month. Uh, the J2X, uh, we just had an announcement on Monday that that contract has been uh, formalized. Uh, upper stage, the proposals are being evaluated now. We expect award next month. Uh, the upper stage instru instrument uh, unit, which is uh, used to uh, guide the Ares 1X, uh, we expect award of that contract by the end of the year. And the spacesuits, uh, so that the uh, astronauts uh, actually have uh, something to wear when they go to and from space, which is very important. Uh, we expect uh, that award to follow shortly after there. They will have all the components uh, in, in work and being worked on by our NASA and contractor team to fly uh, up to the International Space Station and get ready to go to the moon. First flight test of the Ares 1X. This will be a demonstration of a full scale Ares 1. We'll fly off the same launch pads we use for the shuttle today. It will happen in uh, 2009. And so we're well along. Uh, making progress towards that, a lot of work here at Langley to support that effort. And that will be a very exciting uh, first flight test, which will occur before the retirement of the space shuttle. The next slide. Uh, again, we're here at Langley, a tremendous history here in spaceflight at Langley, uh, the home of, of the human spaceflight program. And for those who, who remember their history, it all started here uh, quite a few years ago. Um, a lot of work on the Constellation program. Um, and. Uh, John will go over a little bit of that. The human research program, a lot of work is done here at Langley with the other centers. And uh, this is the home of our exploration technology development program, which Frank will address. And so a lot of really interesting things. And um, so I'll hand it over to John, who will take it from here. Thanks. Thank you, Doc. Uh, first slide, please. Um, At Langley, we are supporting the Constellation program in a number of areas. We're supporting development of the Orion crew exploration vehicle. We're supporting the Ares-1 crew launch vehicle, the Ares-1X development flight test that Doc mentioned. We're supporting the Constellation program with system engineering and studies. We're developing materials and structures for the lunar lander. And we're supporting the Space and Exploration Research Technology program. I'll cover each of these very briefly. Next slide, please. For the crew exploration vehicle, we're doing a number of efforts. Let me highlight the airbag development, which you see there on the right. Next slide, please. This is a, sh a short video of an airbag drop test done here at Langley in the recent past. What you see is a half-scale mass model of the CEV with half the number of airbags we would use on the real vehicle. We drop from several, alt several heights to demonstrate different landing velocities, both vertically and horizontally. We've investigated different airbag fabrics. 
We have a three-stage program. We've finished the first stage. We're moving into the second stage this fall. On the crew launch vehicle, we're doing the aerodynamic studies to determine how this vehicle performs as it goes through the atmosphere on the way to orbit. Next slide, please. On Ares 1X, we are supplying the system engineering and integration workforce to pull this vehicle together for the flight test in less than two years from now. Next slide, please. For a constellation, we're supporting primarily with structures and materials as well as systems analysis and concept development for the lunar exploration systems and the lunar flight program. Next slide. We are also developing technology that will be needed for the lunar surface access module. We need to get this vehicle down to the lowest possible mass, so we have to lift the less into the lunar, onto the lunar surface, and yet protect the astronauts. Next slide, please. We're working on technology support programs to build materials and structures that will support the astronauts when they're on the moon or exploration. We're employing Langley's 90 years of experience in aeronautics here at the center to once again support manned spaceflight. Let me turn it over to Greg who will talk about what we're doing with the launch abort system to protect the astronauts during launch. Greg, thanks John. Well I have the privilege of serving as the manager of the launch abort system office within the crew exploration vehicle project. Launch Abort System Office is responsible for the development, cost, schedule, and technical performance of the Launch Abort System development. We've assembled an excellent team that will be overseeing the development of this Launch Abort System. It includes from NASA, personnel from Langley Research Center, Marshall Space Flight Center, along with support from Johnson Space Center, Kennedy Space Center, and Ames Research Center. The prime contractor for the Orion spacecraft, Lockheed Martin, is responsible to deliver the Launch Abort System to NASA as part of the Orion spacecraft. Lockheed Martin has established a contract with Orbital Sciences Corporation in Dulles, Virginia for the design and system integration of the launch abort system. Orbital Sciences has uh, let many contracts across the country for vendors to develop the solid rocket motors and the structures that will make up the parts of the launch abort system. I'd like to look at a uh, graphic of the Orion spacecraft so we can look at where the launch abort system fits within that particular uh, spacecraft. Starting in the lower left-hand corner, we see the spacecraft adapter. This is a mechanism that will attach the Orion spacecraft to the crew launch vehicle, or Ares-1, as is known now. To the right of that is a service module, which provides the power, along with the propulsion system for the crew module. Uh, then to the right of that is the crew module, which houses the crew, along with the life support system and the guidance and navigation control systems. And then finally, to the right of that is the launch abort system. If we can go to the next graphic, we'll look at the uh, individual pieces that make up the launch abort system. Starting at the bottom is the adapter cone, and this is the mechanism that attaches the launch abort system to the crew module. Above that is the abort motor, and this is the primary motor that we would use to pull the crew module along with the crew to safety in the event there is an emergency or a failed launch vehicle during the launch and ascent of the Orion spacecraft. Above that is the jettison motor. This is another solid rocket motor that we use. We will use this on every mission to remove the launch abort system from the top of the crew module, either during a nominal mission or after an abort scenario. Above that is a canard section that helps provide stability to the vehicle as it is flying. And then above that is an attitude control motor, another, another solid rocket motor that is used to help provide the trajectory and the stability for the system that is free flying uh, through the air. I'd like to talk a little bit about the concept of how this will work. Once the crew enters the crew module and is getting prepared for launch, we provide a capability in the event, as I said, of an emergency or during the ascent of the Orion spacecraft for a failed vehicle to protect the crew from any emergency that may occur. During every mission, as I stated, we will uh, nominally jettison the launch abort system about 30 seconds after the ignition of the second stage motor for the Ares-1 vehicle. If there happens to be an abort scenario from any time that the crew enters the vehicle and is ready for countdown for launch, all the way up to the point of